Who do you think you were going to pitch this to? I mean, did you have any uh, inkling that this might be a tough sell? I should have known better. I mean, I've been doing this for a while. In 2005, I've been doing this professionally for like 15 years, and, and I should have known better. I was so enthused by the idea. I had passion for it. And I was talking about passion earlier. Passion is something that I love in characters that I write for. I love, them in, I love the passion of the lone gunman. I love Mulder's passion. Uh, I think I love it so much I'm attracted to it because I, I feel sometimes like I don't have that much passion of my own. You know, I'm more of an observer, you know. I was passionate for this idea, and so I did not stop to second-guess myself like I usually do, like I will continue to in the future, no doubt. And uh, I, I had a, what, what had happened was Sony Television, the company who, who winds, who's our studio in Breaking Bad, the, the two guys who run Sony Television, Zach Van Amberg and Jamie Ehrlich, uh, were guys I had gotten to know because uh, Mark Johnson and I uh, had a deal with them to do about a year and a half before this. Uh, we were pitching a pilot, and this whole thing uh, went by the wayside uh, at a very late date, right before we were, not long before we were going to start in active pre-production on it. It went away. But the Sony guys like me, uh, they have been the studio on that. And Zach and Jamie had said, you know, anytime you want, you got any other TV, we think CBS made a mistake here. We, uh, we, we think, you know, we like your writing. Any, you know, any other idea you come up with, please come to us first. So I took them at their word, and I came, I came in with uh, Breaking Bad. And I remember sitting there in their office and pitching it to them, and their eyes are kind of, what at the time I thought, their eyes were glazing over with, not, I will say, I did not, to be fair, I've been to a lot of pitches where I think it was boring people. I don't think I was boring these guys, but they were, they had this look, this faraway look in their eyes of, what the hell is this guy telling us? And as I'm pitching it, I'm like, I'm hearing myself out loud, and I'm thinking, this is insane. No one's ever going to buy this as a TV show. Uh, anyway, so I go home, they shake hands, and I would go home, and I'm like, oh, well, that was a waste of time. And then I get a call from them like a day later, and they say, you know what? This is a crazy idea, but we're, we're, we're into helping, you know, we're into, well, let's do it. Let's try to find a buyer for it. And so the, uh, those two guys and Mark Johnson and my agent and I went around town to do different places. We pitched to TNT. Great meeting at TNT. Excellent meeting. The two executives who I pitched it to were on the edge of their seat. They're loving it. And they, I love, it was the best meeting, the best single meeting I've ever had because these two people were, like, they were such good uh, 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 listeners and they were into it. I mean, whether they were faking it or not, I didn't even care because they were so very nice about it. They were, like, paying attention. And then what happens? Oh, man, and then what happens? As I'm telling them the, the first episode. And then he's in the RV and there's dead bodies. Oh, my God, what happens next? And then they looked at each other when I finished, I get to the end, and they look at each other and they say, Oh God! I wish we could buy this. And uh, and they said, uh, if we bought this, we'd be fired. We would literally be fired. <laughs> we cannot put this on TNT. It's meth. It can't be meth. It's reprehensible. Could the guy? We got to ask half-heartedly. Could the guy be a counterfeiter instead? I said, well, no. They said, all right. Well, go. You know, God bless you. You know, they were. That was like the best meeting. It's a. It's. In Hollywood, everyone's always talking about the uh, the buy it in the room moment. I've never had that ever in my life in 20 years of doing this. I've never had someone buy a pitch in the room ever. I don't know that I ever will. I don't much care just as long as the, the close second to the, the victory of someone buying it in the room is telling you in the room they're not going to buy it. It sounds like a bad thing, but it's actually a very good thing. The best thing they can do is buy it. A close second is to give you a quick no. The trouble with Hollywood, movies and TV, is people will leave you dangling on the end of a meat hook for days or weeks or months on end. That happened at HBO. I pitched this thing at HBO, like the worst meeting I've ever had versus the TNT meeting. And it was only like a day apart. We go to HBO, and the, the woman we're pitching to could not have been less interested, not even in my story, but about whether I actually lived or died. It was <laughs> just sitting there just sort of like looking at her watch. And, I, and I've got the flop sweat going. And I get to the end of this pitch, and she's got her two junior executives on either side of her who are just all equally disinterested. This, 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 this radiating uh, uh, toxic gamma radiation of, of, of disinterest is just like 
got got the flop swag going on me. I'm just like I'm, I'm you know, beating my brains out to get to the end of this verbal pitch, you know. And I get to the end of it, and she's like, okay, well, thank you for coming in. <laughs> and, and and like never could do the my agents could never even get her on the phone afterward to uh, to uh, to even say no. People are not doing you a disservice by passing. It happens all the time. It happens. It's like an at bat in baseball. You know, you're amazingly lucky in baseball if you bat 300 or whatever, which is you know two times out of every three you strike out. That's the job. That's the job as a baseball batter. That's the job in pitching a TV show or a movie in Hollywood. Most people are going to turn you down, but there's a way to do it that you don't feel like gum on the bottom of someone's shoe. And 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 giving someone a quick no like these TNT folks did is such a sign of respect. It's just basic human courtesy. But it's you know it's like you know what what we supposedly learn in kindergarten. But it's also it's just like I'd go back and pitch these guys tomorrow. They were so great. So we pitched all over town. Um, uh, we pitched to FX, who wound up buying it. And they were great. FX was great. Uh, uh, John Landgraf and the, the, the executives at, at FX have nothing but respect for them. They actually bought Breaking Bad. And this was, you know, with the show being as dark and edgy and out there and weird and the, the main, the hero, as it were, is a meth cook, you know, that's, that's saying a lot that anyone would get behind this. So, so uh, everlasting credits first to Sony and then to FX and then ultimately to AMC for, for getting behind this thing. But the time when they ultimately bought the, the script, I wrote it for them, they, they, they thought about it for a while and then they ultimately said, we are regretfully passing, we're not gonna be doing Breaking Bad. Uh, and God bless them that they were big enough to when AMC came calling, they were big enough to allow AMC to to purchase the script for Breaking Bad. I say that because I hope that kind of behavior is kind of rare in, 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 in the business. Most often it happened with this Battle Creek thing I wrote. Uh, you know, a network, most networks, the way they see it, you know, we paid what at the end of the day in the, on the bottom line of our corporate you know, multi-billion dollar hierarchy is a pittance. You know, we paid a pittance for the script. We're just going to leave it in a, in, a, in a file cabinet somewhere. We're not going to, we're not going to risk letting it go to another company and risk the thousand to one or 10,000 to one or million to one chance that this script that we passed on becomes a hit for someone else. That would potentially make us look bad. That's the way most folks do business. Uh, FX was very, uh, that was very nice of them. Uh, AMC, uh, it was done. It was dead or in a hammer. Breaking Bad was dead or in a hammer at that point, and because uh, FX had passed, and uh, I thought about maybe turning it into a into a movie script. But then I thought, well, you know, but I don't even own it anymore. FX owns it now. This thing's dead or in a hammer because Showtime has weeds. By the way, weeds. Oh, I should say this for posterity. Weeds is 